Welcome to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and the company to our audience. Absolutely. So my name is Ramtin. I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Quantify. I have an engineering background from the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. We founded the company in 2017 and we want to raise water awareness. We do this by digitalizing water management, by offering easy to understand IoT products. And we've sold roughly 25,000 sensors. And myself personally, I enjoy exercising, health, philosophy, meditation, and I'm actually on a 50 or 51 day streak to learn French through Duolingo. Wow, that's impressive. I've tried Duolingo in the past for other languages, but never was able to stick with it. What I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of talk about the, that, that water management, kind of water, con- water conservation, like all that kind of stuff as it relates to, to enterprise IoT, because we've touched on it before as potential use cases. But we really never dove into it. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who have heard about how IoT is being used with water metering, with leak detection, and things like that. So maybe what you, if you could start us off by setting the stage for how water metering, uh, monitoring, how just water metering in general, leak detection, all those things, how that's kind of been done previous to IoT uh, kind of really coming into the fold and, and playing a prominent role. Absolutely. So traditionally, and to a large extent still, water metering is an analog process. So what I mean by that is that the devices or sensors that meter water are often mechanical devices. So they have cocks, turbines, and even a mechanical display ticking up. Main limitation of these devices is the installation. That's why the adoption grade uh, has been very low. So you would have to have a plumber to physically cut the pipes and have each and every water meter installed physically by a licensed technician. I remember early when we founded the company and we were doing surveys, uh, we we got in contact with this facility manager explaining his ways of working, which was super fascinating. This was 2017. So he showed me the main water meter for an entire apartment building of, of like consisting of 50 or so apartments. It was just one meter for all of them. And he could notice at points that these were ticking constantly, no matter when he was checking, indicating that there might even be a leak. And his way of following that was by listening to the pipes, walking up the stairs and trying to identify which floor might there be a leak on. And we just knew that something had to be done differently here. I guess maybe diving into that a bit further, can you talk about what the real problems that exist in water metering and leak detection are? And then we'll kind of get into how the technology has kind of come in in the IoT space to help solve it. We noticed, especially here in the Nordics, uh, given the setup that I I, I just talked to you about, with one water meter uh, measuring the entire consumption of all of the tenants uh, is just wrong. That means that you have a consumed volume aggregated from each and every apartment and then split unevenly uh, among tenants. It doesn't really matter how much water you use. If you don't use any, you'll still get a water bill by the end of the month. You could have been in Spain practicing your Spanish, uh, given that you live in Sweden, but still you'd pay for someone else's water usage. Uh, and this it boils down to the... Uh, previous reason I was talking about with the plumbers being super expensive uh, to air for the installations of, of water meters on each and every apartment. That's just the way it's been and people accept this. Whereas if you draw the parallel to like electricity and electricity metering, you would never accept to pay your, your neighbor. Oh, shit. No, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I think it's a mix of how the technology or what it has looked like but also the low awareness level of water as an important resource. And what about on the leak detection side? Has there really been much kind of in place prior to connected technologies being made more widely available to help detect leaks and help any prevent leaks or anything along those lines? There has been. um, In in the IoT world, we've seen these devices that uh, you can place around your apartment. uh, And when it comes in physical or direct contact with water, it can send an alarm or a trigger. So if you would have a pipe that's broken behind the wall, this type of device would never detect that until it's too late anyways. So there has been limited types of technologies covering leaks up until now. There, There has been water shutoff valves, but they inherently have the same problems as invasive water meters, meaning that you have to get the plumbers there 
to implement that. So take me through how IoT now is kind of coming in, playing a role in these commercial kind of settings to help solve the water metering, leak detection type problems. It's a combination of a lot of things. We stumbled upon LoRaWAN pretty early. Uh, it's within a couple of months of, of founding the company. We realized the value of data and we wanted a way to, you know, send a lot of data uh, over, I mean, in a building that's large potentially. So handling a lot of devices, not relying uh, on Wi-Fi connectivity or other types of protocols that are often associated with subscription models. So Lure One was perfect for communication, but there still was the uh, problem with the plumber. And this is where we had to innovate using our mechatronic skills. So involving mechanical construction and electrical design. In the beginning, we were very R&D heavy uh, and had to do something that had never been done before investigating uh, different types of solutions often used in industrial applications for temporary measurement of fluids. So taking that uh, type of technology and implementing it, a product or a sensor that facility managers can utilize or real estate owners, property owners. What does adoption look like? What's the process look like when you're talking to a facility manager, facility owner about these solutions, what are the things that kind of come up in those conversations? Where are the, you know, where, where do, what are the pain points that they maybe bring up that are still worth looking at solving? Just kind of like, how does that conversation usually go? It depends a lot. I mean, this, first of all, awareness of our brand and our products is still relatively low. Technology isn't apparent to someone seeking a water meter. Since our water meters can be installed by anyone without cutting pipes, that's not what a facility manager is looking for when they're looking for a water meter. They know that they want to monitor water. How has it been done previously looking at old legacy technology? But also when we actually reach out to um, system integrators or facility managers in need of, of water monitoring, given that this is so new, we're met with a lot of skepticism. We have to educate them and inform them. And there's also a lot of infrastructural obstacles some have preferences with communication protocols. They have sensors currently hooked up through NBIOT, Wi-Fi, ZigBee, LTE, or whatever. And we have chosen LoRaWAN. One thing that is not apparent to a lot of people is something called MID. It's actually a EU level uh, certification for water meters. It's, it's like a little bit of the elephant in the room. It only covers legacy metering technologies. The definition of a water meter is that it's physically attached to or on a pipe. We can test our products according to these standards by sending the device on a pipe, sending it, in, having it tested and passing. But as soon as you remove it from the pipe, it's a gray zone. They've not, it's so new that the legislation or the standards haven't really caught up and causes a lot of confusion in the market. So with, with implementation, so once you kind of get through that educational period and you're ready to start implementing, what does that timeline look like? Like what are the, the hurdles, the challenges that I'm sure each environment is different in which these deployments kind of go out to? Is, is there some kind of common problems or common things you just kind of keep an eye on? We always try to be super supportive with our clients. So, I mean, it could be anything from we don't know exactly which pipes they should be installed on. How do we identify the inlet pipes to each apartment? These are pretty managers, not necessarily plumbers. So trying to guide them through all of this. Uh, it could be that some are less experienced with LoRaWAN. Uh, and so we try to support them, give them guides, help them through the guides. Always interesting to kind of understand with implementation where the challenges really lie. In a situation like this where you have varying environments for different facilities, different apartment buildings, different complexes. Like it, you, it's, it's important to work with a facility manager or facility owner that is knowledgeable about how the whole thing is set up. Otherwise, I'm sure it makes it quite a big challenge for you all. And also one thing is the strength of the antenna or, or the signal sent. I mean, our, our, our devices could be located from anywhere from garages to cellars, thick uh, walls, metal everywhere. It's like a Faraday's cage. And so helping them through that, instructing them to get another gateway or... So, so are you setting up a lower network in every instance here? Not necessarily, no. We provide uh, our clients with gateways, but usually they already, have, they already have routers or gateways. 
what does the common ROI look like? The common benefits that they get? I mean, obviously, it's the visibility into things. You talked about being able to better understand how to divvy up the water usage between apartments and like an apartment complex and so forth, better leak detection. But like, just what's the feedback that you get from facility owners and managers as to when once this is deployed as the things that they're most excited about um, trying to seeing? A lot of them are super uh, fascinated with how fast the installation process goes. Easy to maintain, understand. And with that, they have an increase in water security through an active leak alarm at all times. It works for retrofit, so there's less headache for them. Older buildings, newer ones, doesn't really matter. Uh, so I would say those are the most valuable things for our customers, apart from the fact that it's also wirelessly connected. How much of this can be done by the facility managers? Can most of it be done by them or do they need an expert to come and install it? It depends on the person. Uh, some more tech, uh, tech savvy, where others rely on solution providers or system integrators already hitting the real estate with occupancy sensors, temperature sensors or not. And, and those can now offer our sensors as a part of their platform or solution. Do you see opportunities to kind of expand on these deployments? Because one of the things I know with not just IoT, but with LoRa, is once you've kind of installed the infrastructure and you've kind of got that first use case in the door, there's usually opportunities to build on top of it to do more. And it, how, how are you thinking about that or, or where are you seeing this kind of going? What our clients do is try to uh, pilot these uh, sensors. So it could be, for example, in an apartment uh, building with, consisting of 100 apartments. So they start off with that one apartment complex, but in their portfolio, they have several. So trying that first there, evaluate, was it easy? And then expanding it. So from that, we get a lot of potential from just one installation. But the other uh, question I'm, I'm going to answer is, we receive a lot of requests from industries we've not looked at at all. In the beginning, we were very focused on the residential. We've received uh, requests from campsites that want to lower their guests' usage of water. I mean, the same type of sensor can be used in, in several types of scenarios. The last thing I'll ask you is, are there any particular, I guess, customer success stories or use cases you can maybe take us through real quick, just kind of wrap up our conversation that's like you went into this customer and this is kind of how the process went and what you saw as a success with them? One application where our cubic meter was used in conjunction with another company's uh, device was with Ecolodic. This was a project in France on a camping site where Ecolodic wanted to reduce the consumption of vacationers. I'm not sure if that's a, a word, but guests traveling to these camping sites reduce their water consumption. And using a cubic meter, and hooking it up to a display, which was in each of these mobile homes, displaying how they are consuming water. So they would show each and every tenant uh, uh, a smiley face, green green colored smiley face, if they're uh, not using that much water, an apathic yellow face, uh, if they're doing okay, and a red sad face, if they're using a lot of water. And... Uh, they were super happy with the results coming from that. Um, the camping sites had a problem with their guests over consuming water, especially because a lot of guests are there during warm summer periods. And by now giving their customers or clients uh, the opportunity to understand how their usage impacts uh, the environment, uh, increased user engagement and increased also the camping site's eco-friendliness, let's say, as a brand. So they were super happy about that. Um, this was a pilot consisting of roughly 40, 45 units, and they're now looking to expand this. This has been an awesome conversation. This is a topic we've briefly mentioned here and there as like popular use cases, but we just never had a chance to talk to an expert and kind of dive into it. So I appreciate you coming on, taking the time. For an audience who wants to learn more about the company, kind of dive into things that you're all doing, maybe follow up on this conversation, what's the best way they can do that? Through our website. We're very active on LinkedIn with company updates, but there's a newsroom on our website as well. Follow up on the latest there. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for coming on. And um, we look forward to getting this out to our audience. Thank you, Ryan, for having me. Pleasure talking to you.